This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today I'm going to show how to do picture knitting, also called intarsia knitting, without having an intarsia carriage. You may have a machine for which there is no carriage available, but it's quite possible to do this in another way. Here's my simple little sample we're going to do today. It actually has no floats across the blue polka dot, and the reason is I fed yarn from a white ball of yarn here, then fed from a blue ball of yarn here, and then from white here. My yarn is in balls on the floor in front of me, not going through the upper tension unit. I'm going to hand feed everything. I have a right ball of yarn under here that's white, and then a center ball of yarn that's blue, and then another white ball of yarn sitting over here three separate yarn ends are required. You may have ten or a dozen colors in a row for a more complicated design. You need to set your machine so that it only knits selected needles. On this brother machine I press in the two part buttons. I consult my chart to see what needles are going to be fed white yarn and I pull those out. So these are the needles that will be white yarn. I'm starting on the right. I knit to the left. It knits only the selected needles and then the yarn just passes freely after that. And I return to the right because I'm doing a row from right to left, so a block, a block, and a block. That completes the white part on the right hand side of the row. Now I need to feed a piece of the blue yarn. I'm going to make it a little easier to handle the end of the yarn, the be that is the first part of the yarn, by putting a clothespin on it and then I'm going to hand feed it. It will go again from right to left into the needles that I want to have blue. And then I return the carriage over to the right because you need to do that. You have to keep the direction going on this. We're doing all three sections from right to left. Now I need to do the same thing on the left hand side with a third piece of yarn and get those last few stitches that need to be white. So I hand feed that. There's no need to return because now I'm at the end of that first row. I consult my chart and see how many stitches need to be white on the left hand side of the second row. And I pull those stitches out, in my case into hold position, but you could also pull them out part way and it would still work. And I'm going to knit from left to right and see it only knitted a few, it was a partial row, and return. I can unthread that yarn because next I'm going to use the blue. And I pick out the needles that are going to be blue. It's five needles in the middle according to my chart. And I take the blue yarn that I'm about to feed. This is the most important little detail. Bring it under the color before. So this was the end of the color before and I've gone under it. Then I thread my carriage cross and return. Unthread my carriage. Just let that dangle. If you have any difficulty with these ends getting caught by a brush or something, you could put a clothespin on them to add weight. But I had no problem at all, so you very likely won't either. Just depends on your machine. And now I pick out the white needles for the far right part of that row and I take my white yarn that I'm about to use to knit these needles, make sure it goes under my blue yarn before it goes in the carriage. And there's no need to return because that was the far end of that row. Now you might think that the yarn will twist or tangle because you're always twisting and bringing it under the color before, but it actually doesn't. And the reason that it doesn't is when you go to the right you bring it over in one direction and when you bring it to the left you bring it the other direction so it untwists itself. Now for this third row 
These are the stitches that are going to be white on this end. So I choose those needles across. I go all the way across till it clicks. And back, unthread, bring the blue yarn under, pick out the needles for that blue yarn, it's that center area, across, and back. Wonderful practice hand feeding. Everybody should learn to hand feed the yarn. And then for the white, and I've picked out the needles, thread up, go across. Now the next row is just like this last one was, that is the same group of white needles. Over, back, and the same group of blue needles, bringing this blue yarn underneath. And while I'm doing it, I'm just checking the tension on it. Drop that one. Now for white again, bring the white underneath. And that completes another row. Now I have one more row with that same layout, that is the same needles are going to be white. It's what makes my spot round. Over and back, working my way from right to left this time. And the blue. Over and back. And the white. Which you see, I'm bringing it under that blue. Over. Completes that row. Now I want to pick out my needles for this part that's going to be white on this next row. And these are the needles. I'm following my chart which is in my lap, over, and back, unthread, drop white, pick up blue, it happens to be those five needles, over, and back, drop the blue, pick up the white, it has to go under that blue, and on over. No need to return because that's the end of that row. Next row, pick out the white needles, knit over, and return, unthread, pick out the blue needles, knit over, return, unthread. And now for the white, Now since this is just a little polka dot, after this it's going to just be background. So all I have to do for that is cancel my part buttons and hand feed a few rows. Now let's look at the wrong side of this and just see what we have. Here we have the beginning ends. White and blue had to be added at the beginning. And of course at the end we've got a white and blue. You would have to trim these and sew them in neatly. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop this off. Normally I would bind off, but we've got to keep this video short. You could add texture or even some furriness. You could have made the circle with an eyelash yarn and created a hairy eyeball sort of effect. But here's what we have out on the knit side, and here's what we have on the purl side. And you adjusting and sewing in these ends is important so that you get a good tension between the last knit stitch in one color and the next knit stitch in a different color. So there you go, intarsia on virtually any knitting machine.